Hey guys, it's Vince. Today in this video, we're going to be taking a look at a picture that was sent to me by a past client regarding motor cable mounting and motor connector mounting on an actual stepper motor. Now, many of you already realize that are involved in CNC robotics, this would not be best practice for numerous reasons. But I wanted to do more basic videos like this because I feel there's a lot of questions that come up when guys are building their system and they really don't think of these details until after the fact and they kind of overlook them because they consider them to be you know real basic like in the terms that they have the mentality oh well there's nothing that could possibly happen like this well let's discuss for a minute what we have here and why I consider this not best practice and once again many of you that are already running CNC robotics understand that stepper motors get extremely hot and the reason stepper motors get hot, and I've done a previous video on this, I'll link it in the video description below on this video, is the fact that steppers are always providing holding torque. That means they're always drawing amps, which means unlike a typical AC or DC motor that simply is cycled on or off by the end user, uh, a stepper motor is always on. So, and the main reason that is, of course, is to lock the axis and hold its position until a stepper direction pulse is given, in which case it will rotate fore and aft. Okay, so this motor is always generating heat, and of course its casing is how it dissipates its heat. So whatever is mounted to the casing is naturally going to be having all that heat transferred to it. Okay, so first of all, we have the excessive heat that's generated when you do something like this. The other thing I want to point out, and this is something a lot of guys don't even think about, is that a DB9 connector or any connector for a motor, whether it be GX16, DB9, whatever it may be, when you screw these connectors together, and you can see these jack nuts right here, one, two, and then of course how those jack nuts are actually screwed into is from these top screws on this DB9 cable. What you're doing is essentially formulating a joint. The issue is, is that vibration, when it's transferred from your chassis to those joints, eventually have a lot of potential, even though I put uh, lock washers on the actual uh, jack screws, it can actually vibrate these jack nuts loose if they are not periodically checked. This is a common thing that happens all the time. I get messaged, oh, I'm getting, oh, I'm getting weird connection issues, my motor's acting strange. Uh, really, really, really have to pay close attention to the details when it comes to connections like this because these connection guys are the heart of your system. If there is an arcing lead in here, or if there's a lead that just vibrates loose because, again, one of these jack nuts comes loose, you're going to find that you're going to have sporadic actual use on the motors. So I would highly recommend, and I've said this in previous videos as well, using the maintenance service hours built into Mach 3 or whatever actual uh, motion control software you're using to track how many hours are going in between you servicing these connectors. They all will require servicing and they should never be overlooked or taken for granted because this once again is the entire communication from your drive right here on this connector coming over to here so these are things to really look at the other thing to think about is the amount of stress when a zip tie is placed on these connectors back screw is uh, screwing into this jack nut when this uh, large zip tie which can put an extreme amount of force to, uh, the DB9 connector, you're going to find that over time that can create excessive amounts of stress on the pins and cause all kinds of issues with erratic behavior. So I would never ever recommend putting any type of zip tie in this format where we're stressing possibly this connector here and this connector here. The best way to lay these cables out is to have them so they're joined just with these jack screws, just with the jack nuts, and you have the cable as straight as possible in this particular location. Wherever a joint is, you always want to really look at that joint and put in your mind that, hey, we want to keep that as straight and as true as possible with the least amount of stress, the least amount of flex in that particular area because that's where all the signals are merging. So over time, Again, it's not right away that it happens, and that's the big thing. Guys will connect their systems similar to like this and think, oh, you know, everything's great. 
and that's just for the first one or two hours. As soon as they get serious about their machine, start doing runoff production, they start finding out that as time goes by, intermittent connections start happening, weird things happen, they may go away, then they may come back, and I get a message, hey, Vin, I don't know what's going on. I'm getting intermittent failure on such and such axis or multiple axis. And then I get a picture like this, and we start covering details. So what I'm trying to do with these videos is not just for the novice guy getting involved that I can eliminate a habit before it becomes one, but to my guys that are more advanced already in CNC robotics, really making them think about where their system is right now currently. Because if you've already got connections like this and you think you're making your system neat by doing this, I'm telling you, you're, you're really banking on having trouble in the near future. This is not the proper way to mount motor cables. I understand you're trying to make your system neat, but this is not making it neat. What this is essentially doing is, once again, you're you're not only sh taking the actual cables and resting them against the motor where we're really just mitigating any type of cooling, number one, for the motor, and then you're excessively uh, applying massive amounts of heat to the cable, but we're also employing a lot of stress with the zip ties, and we're putting excess stress on these jack screws and jack nuts. So, again, this is not best practice, guys. Organize your system and really think about your cable placement. Take your time. You know, and I've said this before, I have clients that will have a consultation, even a short consultation with me if they have questions. Hey, how would you set this up? How would you go about pinpointing certain locations as far as this is my machine? And believe me, every robot's different. You know, if you're doing a Bridgeport retrofit, it's going to be a hell of a lot different than a CNC router retrofit. Okay, so the big thing here is, is looking at, number one, you want to make sure that you have maximum longevity on all of your components. That means, once again, all of these connectors that are merging where signals join, they should have the least amount of flex of anywhere on the system. And the main reason that is, if there's the least amount of flex, it's going to assure that these signals that are transpiring with this 9-pin connector are always going to be there to control the robot safely. So looking at it from this perspective, you really put your mind in the train of thought to think. And I think a lot of times what happens is guys are in such a rush to finish the robot that they overlook these what they consider to be basic details. And as basic as they are, they still are extremely critical in all facets of you having a stable robot. So again, I hope that this video has been helpful. I hope it's made you think. Once again, I'm open for consultations, questions, whatever it may be. You can contact me direct at storm2313 at gmail.com. You can also message me through my eBay store. The whole point, guys, I'm trying to make with these videos is to assure that not only you have success today, but you have the longevity for that robot to produce a large amount of ROI in the future. So again, I hope the video has been helpful to all my subs. I love you guys. Thank you. Take care.